Matthew chapter 25, the parable of the ten virgins. Amen. Let me uh, read a little bit of scripture. Encouraging us to be ready. Amen. Because there's going to be a lot of people who are not going to be ready. And we don't want to be in that number. We want to be in a number that we're ready. Like the, uh, the parable of the ten virgins. Five were wise, five were foolish. We want to be in the number with the wise. Amen. Be ready. Parable of the Ten Virgins, Matthew chapter 25, beginning at verse 1 down to verse 13. And it is written, Then the kingdom of heaven shall be likened to ten virgins who took their lamps and went out to meet the bridegroom. Now five of them were wise and five were foolish. Those who were foolish took their lamps and took no oil with them. But the wise took oil in their vessels with their lamps. But while the bridegroom was delayed, they all slumbered and slept. And at midnight, a cry was heard, Behold! The bridegroom is coming. Go out to meet him. Then all those virgins arose and trimmed their lamps. And the foolish said to the wise, Give us some of your oil, for our lamps are going out. But the wise answered, saying, No. Lest there should not be enough for us and you, but go rather to those who sell and buy for yourselves. And while they went to buy, the bridegroom came, and those who were ready went in with him to the wedding, and the door was shut. Afterward, the other virgins came also, saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. But he answered and said, Assuredly, I say to you, I do not know you. Watch, therefore, for you know neither the day nor the hour in which the Son of Man is coming. Amen. Praise God. Okay, so this is an exhortation to us believers, followers of the Lord Jesus Christ, waiting and anticipating, not just waiting, <laughs> but preparing, okay, getting ready, you know, anticipating his return, okay? And he used this parable of the ten virgins, and think about it, five of them were wise and five were foolish, they're virgins. Uh, that may symbolize, you know what I'm saying, their innocence. You know what I'm saying, like that. Uh, you think about a, you know, a virgin. She's about to be she's betrothed to her husband. You know, the Lord is likened unto the husbandmen. These virgins, you know, all the, you know, they're betrothed to him. And they're, you know, pure, clean, holy, undefiled. You know what I'm saying, like that. Never touched by, you know... Uh, men uh, in a sexual manner they you know they haven't been uh you know they have they never married anybody else they're waiting for their betrothed you know what I'm saying they faithful waiting you know that and uh and preparing like they're not out you know what I'm saying like sleeping around committing fornication committing adultery uh being unfaithful to their betrothed you know what I'm saying it's a lot of ways not just you know what I'm saying the natural we think about uh, you know, when a man sleeps with a woman, you know, saying it's not his wife, you know, or a man sleeps with a woman that belongs to another man that's married to another man, 
you know, adultery, fornication, or, you know what I'm saying, of our own selves, you know what I'm saying, like that, you know, um, fornication is not just practice between two people, you know what I'm saying, married, unmarried, but, you know, uh, we can commit fornication, uh, a person can commit fornication with themselves, you know what I'm saying, like that, you know, the Bible speaks about that, you know, um, you know, oh, wow, that's stuff coming to me, <laughs> okay, all right, I, I hear you, <laughs> I'm going to have to get into it. He's like, no, you can't just, you got to get your feet in. You got to get your feet in the water. You just can't put your toe in there. <laughs> okay, okay. I hear you, Holy Spirit. You, you got you to gotta walk it out. You got to put your foot, you got to be all in, all in. Okay. First Corinthians chapter six. Okay. Beginning at verse uh, 15, it is written, it says, know ye not that your bodies are the members of Christ? And I like that. It's got a little T there and it's got a word in italicized, meaning when it says, know you not, the beginning of the question is realized or in essence, it could be said, do you not realize that your bodies are the members of Christ? That's the question to the believers. Do we not realize that our bodies are the members of Christ? His ecclesiastical body. He then asked another question. He said, shall I then take the members of Christ and make them a members of an harlot? And the result, he says, God forbid. So he asked the other question and make them a members of a harlot. A harlot is a, a, a woman of ill repute. You know, uh, today, you know, an adulteress, a, a prostitute, a unclean, you know, woman. And and that could be to a man too. A man could act in harlotry too. You know what I'm saying? Like that. Uh, you know, it's a gigolo, playboy, you know what I'm saying? An adulterer, fornicator. The same principle applies. So don't think I'm coming down on women or the, the you know, the, it applies to all. You know what I'm saying? Like that. So he says, do you not realize that your bodies are the members of Christ? That our whole bodies you know what I'm saying, like that, are members of Christ's body. And then we got to think about all the members of our individual body, you know what I'm saying, the parts of it, the fingers, phalanges, you know what I'm saying, like that, your hands, your arm, lower arm and upper arm and your chest and muscles and the skeleton and all the tissue, your sexual organs, you know, it's all the way down to your, your pinky toe, the bottom of your foot, the head of your toe, you know. Okay, do you not realize that your bodies, that's the whole body, are members of Christ, his ecclesiastical body. He asked, shall I then take the members of Christ and make them the members of a harlot? He says, God forbid. And we pray that, yeah, God forbid. Don't let it happen, Lord. Keep back your servants from presumptuous sins. Uh, help us to present our bodies unto you as a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto you, which is our reasonable service. That's how, you know what I'm saying, what is uh what is acceptable unto God, that our bodies should be presented to him as a living sacrifice. And it's first thing it says, holy, you know what I'm saying? Holy. Having therefore these promises, dearly beloved, let us cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh and spirit, perfecting holiness in the fear of God. We should fear, you know what I'm saying, to take God's bodies, you know what I'm saying, like that, and join them unto a harlot or a person you know what I'm saying, of ill repute and have a reputation for being, you know what I'm saying, uh, loose and uh, fornicating or committing adultery, sleeping with somebody's husband, somebody's wife, or just sleeping around, or even, you know, just self-pleasing themselves, which is called masturbation. You know, I know you don't hear, you don't hear a lot of that, and some people don't know that, you know what I'm saying, like that. You know, uh, other forms of sexual activity outside, you know what I'm saying, the purpose that God created sex for, you know, that's considered, you know, a, a form of harlotry. Uh, what's the other word I'm looking for? It's probably up here when he spoke about effeminate uh, abusers of themselves with mankind, like men with men, you know, even though a man with a man, that means a man has penetrated another man, you know what I'm saying, like that. So, so abusers of themselves with mankind, effeminate, instead of a man having, you know, his masculine dominating, you know, is effeminate, a woman instead of her femininity dominating, you know, she's emasculated, you know, and stuff like that. So he goes on to write in verse 16. He says, what? It's his question mark. 
He says, know ye not, again, do you not realize that he which is joined to an harlot is one body? Do you not realize that, that when a, a person joins themselves to a harlot is one body? If a person joins themselves to another um, person, whether they're harlot or not, they're bo one body. For, you know what I'm saying, for this cause shall a man leave his father and wife, then they... It should be joined unto his wife, and they, they too shall become one flesh. You know what I'm saying? Like that. It's one body. Do you not realize that he or she who was joined to a harlot is one body? He asked the question. He goes on the right. He says, for two says he shall be one. He's quoting from Genesis chapter 2, verse 24. Well, we had the first mention of that, you know what I'm saying? Uh, when God, you know... Um, you know, said it's not good for man to be alone. I will make him a help meet for him. Okay. And that's when, you know, you know, uh, God, um, you know, put Adam to sleep. He caused a deep sleep to fall on Adam and he slept and he took one of his ribs out of his side and closed up the flesh instead thereof. And the rib which the Lord God had made, had taken from the man, made he or builded he a woman and brought her unto the man. And Adam said, this is now bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman, a, a man with a womb. <laughs> okay, a woman, a feminine, you know what I'm saying? She has a womb, woman, okay? Because she was taken out of man. Therefore, here we go, shall a man leave his father and his mother and shall cleave unto his wife. And they shall be one flesh. Amen. Praise God. The last verse of that chapter says, And they were both naked, and the man and his wife, and were not ashamed. But people, you know what I'm saying? We have done, and other people have done, you know what I'm saying, without shame and done things, so we don't even get into all that. Okay, so getting back here in First Corinthians chapter 6, let me see, am I missing anything? You said with themselves. Yeah, uh, uh, masturbation. Uh, is that what you're asking, Sister Renee? Yeah, a person can commit, um, you know, fornication or a form of harlotry. You know, if we say fornication, you know what I'm saying, with themselves. You know, it's a form of harlotry. You know what I'm saying, like that. Yeah. Does that answer your question? Because we're going to get down here where it says uh, the fleet fornication. Does that answer your question? You already... Went over it. Okay, I already got you. Got your answer. Okay, gotcha. He says, what? Know you not that which is joined to the heart is one body? For two says he shall be one flesh. Verse 17. But he that is joined unto the Lord is one spirit. Okay, so that's the shot. We're first joining together. You know what I'm saying? Like that. We're joined together by the Lord. You know what I'm saying? When we are born again of his Holy Spirit, you know what I'm saying? We united to him by his spirit and identified with him in baptism. You know what I'm saying? Baptized in the likeness of his death, raised in the likeness of his resurrection. We are identified with Christ and come into the body of Christ, you know what I'm saying, externally through the ordinance of baptism, but spiritually by his spirit, born again of his spirit, you know what I'm saying, sealed with our spirit, okay? He that is joined unto the Lord is one spirit. So we're one spirit, Okay? And, you know what I'm saying, if we're going to go join to another spirit, it should be a man to his wife, and they too shall be one flesh. A wife to her husband, and they too shall be one flesh. Not to, you know what I'm saying, a person who's not your husband or not your wife, you know what I'm saying, like that. Because then that would be considered joining oneself to a harlot. Okay? And so now we got to get into more def defining the terms. We'll let the spirit speak and the word speak. And in all I get, we'll, we'll get an understanding. Amen. Praise Yah. 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 15, it speaks about the harlot. And here we go. And correct me if I'm wrong. Okay. The Greek word uh, pr pronunciation is poor nay. That's how you pronounce it, poor name. Okay? The description of it, it's a feminine of another word. Okay? And it says a scrumpet. I don't know if you're familiar with that word, a scrumpet. 
S T R U M P E T. You know what I'm saying? Like that. You know, if you take off the S, if you take off the, let's see, yeah, the S, you know what I'm saying? You'll get Trump, Trumpet. You know what I'm saying? Like that one. Take off the ET, so you get Trump. So you give you the idea. You know, not the idea, but I'm just trying to, you know, strumpet. And we'll define that too. Let's go look up the word strumpet from the dictionary. A strumpet. This is a description of a harlot. Strumpet. Not a word that we usually hear in our modern day, you know what I'm saying, uh, language and, and conversation. A strumpet. Let me turn it up so you can see here. Strumpet. Yeah. This is on the Webster Dictionary here. Strumpet. Strumpet. I want to make sure I'm pronounced it correct. Strumpet. Okay. It says a prostitute. That's a person, you know what I'm saying? Uh, we, we generally think about a prostitute uh, in terms of a female, but a man could be a male prostitute as well. And then also the prostitute is a person who is selling their body to someone who's not their husband or their wife. You know what I'm saying? Like that, you know, exchange, you know, giving their body to have sexual intercourse with a person who's not their husband and wife for money or whatever, pay or whatever. But then you got some people who are prostitutes who hardly, they'll do it for nothing. I know I used to do it for nothing. <laughs> Okay, I willingly and gladly do it. You know what I'm saying? Like that. So every prostitute is not just going to, you know, she's selling her body. You know what I'm saying? There are prostitutes, male and female, who would give you their body. You know what I'm saying? Like that. They would give you your body for free. Yeah, be free up front, but then you may pay pay for it in the, on the back end. you like with a venereal disease or a terminal disease, God forbid. You know what I'm saying? Like that. So let's take heed. First it says a prostitute. It says, then the second says a sexually promiscuous woman, but that could be, again, a sexually promiscuous man, okay? Let's see what else it says about this scrumpet. Uh, this is archaic, a prostitute or promiscuous woman, but like, again, I don't know why they just don't put it, say, uh, a prostitute or promiscuous woman or a man, because a man could be a prostitute as well, because he would be called a different term, like a gigolo. He's selling his body for money or things, you know, in exchange, you know, it's like that. So it's to me, it's the same thing. It's, it's harlotry. Some pay money as well. Yeah. What do you mean? The prostitute? Is that what you're saying? She paying her, her trick money or is she giving the person money to have sex with her? I don't know. I already said, you know, a prostitute, you know, she, you know, saying sells her body for money. But are you saying something different? Or are we on the same page? Well, am I seeing your, your comment late? I might be seeing it late. But anyway, I'm going to continue on. Oh, God, these people sending me, a, um, I'm not taking any guests right now, especially if I don't know you, I'm not acquainted with you. I don't accept, you know what I'm saying, in, uh, in, uh, requests from people I don't know. So you're welcome to come here and listen and partake of the ministry, follow, like, share, you know, you know, get, you know, let's get acquainted with you, you know, and then you got to be doing good works on your profile too. Like you got to be going live. You got to be a Christian. This is a Christian, you know what I'm saying, uh, live. So if you're not, you know what I'm saying, like that. If you're seeking Christ, you know, seeking salvation, type in the comments and we'll pray and lead you to Christ. Amen. Praise God. But we can't give you a platform, you know what I'm saying, like that. So thank you for being here. God bless you. Okay, let's see what else we got about a scrumpet. Okay, prostitute, harlot. There it goes again. Call girl, hooker. See, those are all in the feminine terms. Lady of the evening, woman of the street, hussy, slut. Streetwalker, you know, a man could be doing these same things, you know what I'm saying, like that. So I don't know why they ain't like modernized, brought it up to date. But if I bet you I go look up a gigolo, it's gonna say everything pertaining to a man, you know what I'm saying, like that. But it's the same thing, it's the same thing, you know. And well, since we're here by Harlot, let's look up Harlot while we're here and let's see what we got for Harlot. The dictionary, a prostitute or sexually promiscuous woman, the same. It says young idler, 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 rogue, you know what I'm saying, like that. Uh, a, a prostitute or promiscuous woman, same, uh, like a harlot, okay, okay, uh, a harlot, a rascal, okay. Uh, synonyms for prostitute, concubine, tramp, courtesan, whore, 
floozy, hall girl, hooker, fall woman, hussy, lady of the evening, nymphomaniac, loose woman, slut, painted woman, streetwalker. But there are men that do the same thing. So don't get offended because, you know, you know, they're just basically categorizing it as just like this is only a woman. These are all synonyms like that. But these are the actions. You know what I'm saying? That's what matters. You know what I'm saying? Is the person is sexually promiscuous. You know what I'm saying? Like that. And like I said, a man can be sexually promiscuous as well. So he's a harlot too. He's just a male harlot, a male whore. You know what I'm saying? Like that. That's the only, that's the same, that's the same thing. Okay. And so let's get back to the, the biblical description of it. A scrumpet, what's we all define, an idolater, figuratively, in a figure of speech, a figuratively, it says an idolater. It's a form of idolatry. Why? Because people worship their bodies and they worship other people's bodies. It's a form of idolatry. You know what I'm saying? Husband and wife, yeah, you're supposed to fulfill your um, your duties, you know what I'm saying, like that, toward one another, do benevolence, but you're not to worship your own body. You're not to worship anybody. You don't worship your wife. You don't worship nobody, okay? God is a spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth, okay? We just, he just used these as expression, his body as expression and worship, but it's got to come from the heart, from the spirit of the man. See, these are just, you know what I'm saying, the vehicles that we can use in worship. We want to lie, pros prostrate, lift up our hands, do an act of kindness of, of, of service as worship to the Lord or praise and worship out of our mouths. You know what I'm saying? Like that, okay? An idolater. We don't use hear these terms, you know what I'm saying? Like that. Yes, people worship their own bodies and they worship other people's bodies. See what I'm saying? That's an idolatry. That's a form of idolatry. See what I'm saying? So if a man is self-pleasing himself, you know what I'm saying? That's a form of fornication, harlotry, idolatry, okay? If a woman does, she's pleasing herself sexually, that's a form, you know what I'm saying? That's masturbation, a form of, you know what I'm saying? Harlotry, fornication, you know what I'm saying? Like that, idolatry, it's a form. It's a figure of it. So it says harlot whore. You know what I'm saying? So we, we got the definition of We got the meaning of it. So, okay. Going on, verse 17. But he that is joined unto the Lord is one spirit. Okay? And that's how we should be. A person who is joined unto the Lord, born again of his Holy Spirit, sealed by the Holy Spirit until the day of redemption. Okay? And another one that God brings together, they join together, they become one, okay? They're one flesh, okay? And they're one joined in the Lord as one and with one spirit. They're still faithful to the Lord, okay? Verse 18, he says, flee fornication, avoid fornication. He says, every sin that a man does is without the body or is outside of his body. So whatever sin a person is doing like that is outside of the body. Maybe using the body as an instrument, you know what I'm saying, doing sin. No, not sinning against his own body, but every other sin, it says, every sin that a man does is without the body or outside the body. But he who commits fornication sins against his own body. You see the harlotry? You see, you see the sin? You see fornication. Now we got to define the word fornication. Flee sexual immorality. That's what it says in the New King James Version. King James says flee fornication. New King James says flee sexual immorality. So let's define the word fornication. Remember when we defined the word uh, harlotry the, in the Greek is porne. This word fornication, okay, is pronounced pornea. P-O-R-A. It's got a that. N-E. I A pornea. This is where we get the word, the root word. You hear the word pornography. Yeah, it's not just what you watch and look and you partaking of through your eyes and the ear. You hear the sounds and things like that. You know, like that. It's a get. You know, it can be perpetrated not just with a person or you through your eye gate or your ear gate. 
partaking of other men's sins, you know what I'm saying, or actually committing them, you know, having sexual relations, that's sexual immorality with a person that is one not, not one's wife or husband. Okay? That's one occasion. That's pornea. It's the root. You know what I'm saying? We get pornography. Okay, this is coming from another word, but it says harlotry. It's the same thing. Just a different expression. It's harlotry. And we define what all that is, okay? Including adultery. That is, you know what I'm saying? A man sleeping with a woman that's not his wife. A, a woman sleeping with a man that's not her husband. And incest, okay? That's when family member is having sex with another family member. That's incest, okay? And all incest is not willingly done. Some people, you know what I'm saying? They take advantage of their relatives having sex with them. That's incest, and it could be considered also as rape. You know what I'm saying? Like against a person's will, having sex with your own relative, your brother, sister, cousin, uncle, aunt, sister. You know, it, we talk from real life here. It says figuratively, idolatry. Again, it's a form of idolatry, of self-worship, or worshiping something, or you know what I'm saying, like that, or you know what I'm saying, or the act. The act of having sex, you know, illegal, immoral sex is a form of idolatry. You'd be surprised. Like people like they really love, you know, sex more than the person. They don't care about the body. They just want to have sex. You know what I'm saying? Like that. That's a form of idolatry. They worship it. They'll pay. They give all they all they living for it. You know what I'm saying? Like that to satisfy their lust, they flesh. You know what I'm saying? Like that. Watching other people have sex and things like that. You okay. It's translated as I, uh, fornication, it, you know, I, fornication, right? So he says flee fornication, flee sexual immorality. Like he say, flee adultery, flee idolatry. Like this is what the believer, we're supposed to be running away from, not running to, not seeking to make provisions for the flesh to fulfill the lust thereof. We should be running away from when temptation comes and the thing is getting stronger and we're not, you know, we're, we're tempted to give in and, and things like that. Nature. No, no, we shouldn't be there contemplating it. We should like at that point, you know what I'm saying? We're like, oh no, let me get out of here. Like Joseph, run away, run forest, run real fast, run real fast, run away. I don't care what nobody think about you. They call you coward, sissy punk, whatever they want to call you. Run, okay? Run, 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 okay? Run away, flee, the words God says. Flee immorality, flee sexual immorality, flee fornication, to run away, literally or figuratively, by implication to shun, avoid it, by analogy to vanish, like I'm out of sight, out of mind, I'm out of here. You know, be looking around, like, what, what brother Trey said? He gone, well, he was just here, you know, they were about to get it on, they about to have an orgy on this one, you know, and looking around, they, oh, before she get, I'm gone. She, oh, she dropped her. Oh, no, bye. I'm gone. She turned around. I'm gone. Where he go? Where he go? Where, where he go? He gone. He not standing there to start around looking, trying to see and everything. You know, that's what people watching porn and everything. You know what I'm saying? Like that. They're, they're not engaged in the act. They're watching. You know what I'm saying? Like that. Watching someone perform an act, an illegal sexual act, a sexual immorality. You know, I don't want to drag it out too much, y'all. <laughs> okay. Great. We've been going live. Okay, so we need to escape, flee away. Get away. Run away. Don't think. In the word said, let him that think he stand, take heed lest he fall. Okay? We think we strong enough like that. And you know our flesh start rising up and the lust of the eyes is, you know, the lust of the flesh is part of life. And we stay there looking and listening and, and, and hoping we, no, you better go. You better go before you become, you fall and you become ensnared and entrapped. Because some people out there, they're looking to entrap people, to seduce them. It's called seducing spirits. Like you weren't even looking for it. And here comes along in a seducing spirit. Come on over to my house. Okay? I got that red light special for you. You know what I'm saying? Like that. You know, call Tyrone. You know what I'm saying? It's a booty call. You know what I'm saying? Like that. Like, come and get it. You know what I'm saying? You know.
It speaks about that in the book of uh the, the uh what is it, the Psalms or the Proverbs about that harlot, that crafty woman. She's standing at the corner. She's calling to passenger buys and stuff. Come on in here. The good man is gone. He took a bag of money. He only go. He'll be back at the appointed date and time. Come on, let us have our feel of love and caress ourselves. And I said my vows and I got my bed prepared and spices and flowers and it's all ready for it just for us. Let's let's go do our thing. He don't know that you know saying the dead are there like she. <laughs> She done cast down many strong men, you know. Some people they please. That's a fatal attraction, you know what I'm saying? Like her go, she like she, she like a black widow. She ain't trying to have sex with you. Just she wants to really enslave you and take your soul, take you, drag you down to hell, okay? Like unalive you, and you just think about pleasure, you know. God forbid, okay? That's what he said about that. God forbid. God don't let it happen. Don't let it happen. Certainly not. God forbid. Let's see. Maybe we can get a uh, definition on that. God forbid. Nah, just no. You know what I'm saying? God, don't let it happen. So let's move on. Okay. So he says, flee sexual immorality. And he says, every sin that a man does is outside the body. Like we can use our bodies to do sin to do sin, but know that all sin originates from the heart. Out of these, these things proceed from the heart, you know, through the lust of the eyes, lust of the flesh, the pride of life, okay? And then we acting it out, committing the act outside the body, okay? You can start with a thought, you get deposits in heart and the spirit, and then it's going to be acted out through the lust of the eyes, lust of the flesh, the pride of life, okay? Every sin that a man does is outside the body, but he who commits sexual immorality sins against his own body. Whether you're going to sleeping with a man or woman that's not your, you know what I'm saying, husband or wife, or you're self-pleasing yourself through acts of masturbation and other things like that or whatever to get yourself to, you know, have an ejaculation or, or whatever to incite your lust. Okay, that's sinning against one own, one's own body. A lot of times we think like, well, I'm not hurting nobody. I ain't sleeping with nobody else, husband or wife, or I ain't sleeping with some, but some, some guy that's supposed to be my boyfriend, supposed to be courting me. We're not sleeping together. We're dating. We're courting for marriage. We ain't doing nothing. When you get home and stuff, you then you start policing yourself, thinking about them and stuff like that. That's a sin. The sin going to start right with a thought. If a man look on a woman and lust after her with his eyes, he's already committed adultery in his heart. Same thing for a woman. Looks on a man and lust after him. She's already committed adultery in her heart. And so we got to really start right there at the heart to really guard our hearts with all diligence because out of it flow the issues of life. We got to gird up the loins of our minds. We got to cast down every imagination and every high thing that exalts itself against or above the knowledge of God. We got to be sober. We got to be vigilant because our adversary, the devil, he is walking about as a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. We got to resist him steadfast in the faith. Okay, we can't blame everything on the devil. You know what I'm saying? We can't be letting ourselves be entertained by, you know, things of the word says, abstain from fleshly lusts, which war against the soul. Like, we you know what I'm saying? We've been bartered, we're bartered so much temptation. You just turn on the TV, lust and temptation there. You know, get online, lust and temptation there. You know what I'm saying? Like that. Go go grocery shopping, lust and say, go to work, lust and temptation. Like, we really have to be on guard. You know, be sober, be vigilant, and you got to recognize it for what it is. And when you see it, come, you got to avoid it, flee away from it. You know, do what you need to do, you know what I'm saying, to stay in the spirit, to stay walking and living in the spirit, okay? And you know what I'm saying, not only that, the most important thing is to stay prayerful because you'll get your spiritual fortitude, your strength that you can stand against the wiles of the devil. That when you need to flee, you flee. When you need to stand, you take a stand, okay? And you resist, okay? But when you need to flee, you need to flee, Amen. Flee fornication. Every sin that a man does is outside the body, but he who commits sexual immorality sins against his own body, which we're going to see that our bodies are not our own. Remember, we're members of the body of Christ. You know what I'm saying? We're going to see. Our bodies are not our own anymore as believers. Once we join to Christ, we're one spirit with him. We're members of the body of Christ. We are not our own. We've been bought with a price. We're not our own. Like, I don't own my body no more. 
It's illegal for me to take this body and do things with it, like sin outside my body or sin against this body that's not mine, you know, or not yours. It's not ours no more. We have to give an account to the Lord, okay? Let's see, Acts 2, 20. Brother Nick, God bless you. I see it says, Brother Nick, God bless you. But everyone who calls on the name of the Lord was there. Amen, praise God. We're in 1 Corinthians chapter 6. Amen. As we uh, started out in Matthew chapter 25, talking about the parable of the 10 virgins. Uh, we were inspired by a song that an artist was singing, uh, Be Ready. So we're going to get back to that. But, uh, you know, we're just talking about one aspect of, you know, saying a virgin being faithful to her betrothed. And you might not be a virgin. You might be married again. You might be a widow. You know what I'm saying? You might have never got married, but you're not, uh, you haven't, you, you're not a virgin in the sense that you never that you have had sex and you have had children. No one's condemning you like that because we don't live in a perfect world. But after, you know what I'm saying, repentance, God's restore us. You know what I'm saying? Like that. He cleanses us. You know what I'm saying? He restores us. You know what I'm saying? Like that. He cleanses us. He restores us. He restores our purity and it's our responsibility to guard our purity in our minds and our bodies and our spirits and our hearts, our minds, our will, our most, our souls, our bodies. You know what I'm saying? Like that. And be alert. You know what I'm saying? Like that. For everything that's contrary to it. Like, you know, don't watch the trap Satan trying to set you. Watch the seducing spirit. He's trying to sit, you know, send you away. You know what I'm saying? Get you to give in, yield to temptation to, you know what I'm saying? To lose your testimony of purity, of holiness, of faithfulness to God. So remember, it's a form of idolatry and harlotry. Okay? He commits sexual immorality, sins against his own body. He says, or do you not know that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit who is in you? Remember, he that is joined to the Lord is one spirit. How are we joined to the Lord? Not just by baptism, identifying with him, but mostly sealed by the Holy Spirit, born again by the Holy Spirit. Okay, baptized in the spirit. Okay, made to drink into one spirit. Okay, do you not know, believer, Christian, we didn't ask ourselves, do you not know that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit, which who, the Holy Spirit, who is in you, whom, the Holy Spirit, you have from God. Yes, it came from above. And you are not your own. Do you not know this, Christian Especially babes in Christ. We, you know what I'm saying? We got to disciple them in the doctrine of Christ. They don't know that they're out there using their bodies, doing what they want to do, you know, fornicating, pleasing themselves, committing idolatry and adultery and fornication, you know, sinful things and being partake with other men's sins. You know what I'm saying? Like that. But now, after, you know what I'm saying, the one that's repented of their sins, forsaken their sin, and received the gift of the Holy Spirit, we're sealed by the Holy Spirit, uh, Perhaps they have not been taught as of yet. Do you not know that your body, the physical body, the member of Christ, the body of Christ, do you not know that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit who is in you, whom you have from God and you are not your own? Okay? That's what he said, happened. Therefore, these promises, dearly beloved, don't be unequally yoked together with unbelievers, okay? For what fellowship has righteousness with unrighteousness? Hmm? Thank you, Holy Spirit. 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 14. Be you not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. For what fellowship has righteousness with unrighteousness? And what communion has light with darkness? And what agreement has Christ with Belial? as a reference probably to probably Satan or the devil, or what part has he that believes with an infidel? A person who's faithless, who doesn't have, you know what I'm saying, the faith of the Son of God, unbeliever. And what agreement has the temple of God? Remember, our bodies are the, the temple of the Holy Spirit. And what agreement has the temple of God with idols? Remember, harlotry, fornication, that's a form of idolatry. What agreement has the temple of God with idols? Okay, so if you join yourself to a harlot or a person like that, that's a form of idolatry, adultery, fornication. That's idolatry, okay? For you are the temple of the living God, not just the Holy Spirit, the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, okay? As God has said, 
I will dwell in them and walk in them and I will be their God and they shall be my people. There's a distinction. There's a difference. Everybody's not, you know, God is not their God. They're not the people of God. Excuse me. Verse 17. Wherefore, he says, come out from among them. And them, you know what I'm saying, is what? Unbelievers, the unrighteous, darkness, okay? No agreement with Satan or with idols, people who, you know what I'm saying? They don't honor God with their bodies, you know what I'm saying? His spirit is not in them. So don't join yourself unto them. That's a form of idolatry. Come out from among them and be you separate, says the Lord. And touch not the unclean thing. And I will receive you and will be a father unto you. And you shall be my sons and daughters, says the Lord Almighty. It concludes in 2 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 1. Having therefore these promises, dearly beloved, let us cleanse ourselves from all things filthiness of the flesh and spirit, perfecting holiness in the fear of God. Present your body as a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world, but be you transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that good, perfect, acceptable will of God. Do you not know that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit who is in you, whom you have from God, and you are not your own? Well, now we know we are without excuse. So he says, for you were bought at a price. And that price, you know what I'm saying, we were deemed purchased by the precious blood of Jesus Christ. Okay? We were not redeemed, you know what I'm saying, with silver or gold or the vain conversation traditions from our fathers or ancestors, okay, like that. You were bought at a price, and you know what I'm saying, that price was the precious blood of Jesus Christ, okay? We were sold under sin, okay? Therefore, he says, glorify God in your body, that's all the members of your body, the parts of your body, your sexual organs too, glorify God in your body and in your spirit. He's concerned about it all, okay? Your body and your spirit. He wants it all, holy. Glorify God in your body and in your spirit, okay? Cleanse yourselves from all filthiness of the flesh and spirit, perfecting holiness in the fear of God. Glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's purchase by the blood of Jesus Christ, the precious blood of Jesus Christ. We belong to him. We are God's property. He said, my people. He said, we hear the term God's property. God's people. He said, you shall be my people. We are God's people who are once not a people, but now we are the people of God. And he's our God. And we have responsibility, okay, to, to honor him, okay, to glorify him in our body and our spirit, which are God's. To be faithful, you know, man, that's what we came here for, you know what I'm saying, talking about the parable of the ten virgins in Matthew chapter 25. Amen? Okay, so you think about a virgin, you know what I'm saying, like that. This is what the Lord is looking for. He's coming back for, you know what I'm saying, the body of Christ is considered the bride of Christ. One, he's coming back, you know what I'm saying, looking for those, the body of Christ and its members, you know what I'm saying, like that. He says, without, hold up, let me get to it, in Ephesians 5, when he says, uh, Hebrews, I mean, Ephesians chapter uh, 5, let's say, pick it up, verse 25, husbands, love your wives, even as Christ also loved the church or the assembly and gave himself for it, that he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of the water by the word. That is the word of God. You are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. So the word is purifying, okay? He says that he might present it to himself. 
a glorious assembly or church, people use the term church, that he might present it to himself, a glorious assembly, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that it should be holy and without blemish, without fault. Amen. Praise God. Okay, that's what, you know, that's what he's coming back for. Okay, if it's unclean and got blemishes and faults and unrepentant sin and unforsaken sin, like, you know, that's going to be like the foolish virgins, you know what I'm saying, like that. We're going to see what's going to happen to them. Like, they're going to get shut out. Okay, because even over here in the first Corinthians chapter 6, where we're just reading from, if you just go back up a few verses, he starts at verse 9, he says, Do you not know that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God? Do you not know this? He says, be not deceived. Neither fornicators, remember we've defined fornication, fornicators nor idolaters, we define a form of idolatry, nor adulterers, we've been talking about that, okay? Nor effeminate, we've been talking about that as well. Nor abusers of themselves with mankind, We've been talking about that as well. Nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor extortioners shall inherit the kingdom of God. They, they're not going to make it. They're going to be like, Lord, Lord, open unto us. And they're going to say, I don't know you. But yet they are calling him Lord. They acknowledge him as Lord. He said, These people draw near to me with their mouths, but their hearts are far off away from me. And it, 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 Lord, Lord, why do you call me Lord and do not the things which I say? He said, and such were some of you. See, that's past tense. That was our past life. He says, but you are washed in the precious blood of Jesus Christ and by his Holy Spirit, purged, cleansed. You are sanctified, okay, set apart, but you are are justified in the name of the Lord Jesus, declared righteous and by the spirit of our God, the Holy Spirit, who creates in us a clean heart and renews a right spirit within us. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Mm. Yeah, getting back to the parable. Again, the kingdom of heaven shall be likened unto ten virgins who took their lamps and went out to meet the bridegroom. Now five of them were wise and five were foolish. Those who were foolish took their lamps and took no oil with them. But the wise took oil in their vessels with their lamps. But while the bridegroom was delayed, they all slumbered and slept. And at midnight, a cry was heard, Behold! The bridegroom is coming. Go out to meet him. So this is a time, of, you know what I'm saying, of getting ready, preparation. You know what I'm saying? And you can see that the foolish ones, they were not fully prepared. They didn't have, you know what I'm saying, they didn't have oil to take with them in their vessels with their lamps. They had time to go and buy for themselves, but, but instead of doing that, Preparing themselves, making sure they have what they need, prepared, and watching and wait. Just like the other one, while the bridegroom, they all slumbered and slept. They were sleeping instead of going and get, you know what I'm saying, prepared and getting what they need to be ready for the bridegroom's return. They were sleeping. You'd be surprised. A lot of people are slumbering and sleeping. They sleep. They need to wake from sleep. You know what I'm saying? And they need to be getting ready. Getting, making preparations and getting ready instead of being slumbering and sleeping. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Ephesians chapter five, verse 14, it is written, wherefore he says, awake thou that sleep and arise from the dead and Christ shall give you light. Okay, see then that you walk circumspectly, not as fools. Five were wise and five were foolish, but as wise. Okay, 
The wise one, they took oil with, in their vessels with their lamps. See then that you walk, walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise, redeeming the time. Stop slumbering and sleeping. You know what I'm saying? Like that. You need to buy back the time. Redeeming the time because the days are evil. Amen. Praise God. Wherefore be ye not unwise, but understanding what the will of the Lord is. And be not drunk with wine wherein is excess over indulgence, but be filled with the spirit. Okay, this is how we need to be, you know what I'm saying, making preparations and getting ready. But a lot of people are slumbering and sleeping when, you know what I'm saying, they should be getting ready and making preparations for the Lord's return, for the bridegroom's return. Okay, First Thessalonians chapter 5. I'm beginning at, beginning at verse 1. I'm going to read up until my point. But of the times and the seasons, brethren, you have no need that I write unto you. For you yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so comes as a thief in the night. Okay? When the bridegroom comes. Okay? It's okay. It's the day of the Lord. And it comes as a thief in the night. For when they shall say peace and safety, then sudden destruction comes upon them as pains upon a woman with child, and they shall not escape. But you, brethren, are not in darkness, that that day should overtake you as a thief. Because we watching, waiting, prepared. Okay, you are all the children of light and the children of the day. We are not of the night, nor of darkness. Therefore, let us not sleep as do others, but let us watch and be sober. Like a lot of people are intoxicated, say, don't be drunk with wine where in is excess. Okay? They drunk, they sleeping, slumbering, lying it down, you know what I'm saying? God knows what else they're doing or done, you know what I'm saying? In a deep sleep. And they're not, they unprepared, they're not ready. Let us not, therefore let us not sleep as do others, but let us watch and be sober. For they that sleep, sleep in the night. And they that be drunken are drunken in the night. But let us who are of the day be sober, putting on the breastplate of faith and love. And for a helmet, the hope of salvation. For God has not appointed us to wrath, that is condemnation, but to obtain salvation by our Lord Jesus Christ, who died for us, that whether we wake or sleep, we should live together with him. The, the, the wise, they slumming and slept too. They were sleeping too, you know what I'm saying? So whether we wake or sleep, okay, we should live together with him. When he went, when they went in, you know what I'm saying? The door was shut. Okay, and so shall they ever be with the Lord. He said, wherefore, comfort, encourage yourselves together and edify, build up one another, even as also you do. Amen. Praise God. Back here, speaking about the all slumminess, verse six said, and at midnight a cry was heard. Okay, behold, the bridegroom is coming. Go out to meet him. Then all those virgins arose and trimmed their lamps. And the foolish said to the wise, give us some of your oil. For our lamps are going out. Instead of sleeping, y'all should have been going to buy then. Okay, you should have been getting ready and being ready then. Even if you did, you know what I'm saying, was wait or sleep. You would have been ready. You would have been prepared. Now they're saying, y'all give us some of y'all oil. Our lamps are going out. No. The wise said to them, not, okay, no. But the wise answered 
saying, no, lest there should not be enough for us and for you. They wasn't being cruel. They weren't being stingy. They weren't hoarding. They weren't being greedy. Everybody got the same opportunity. They had the resources because they said, go and buy for yourselves. And they went to buy. They had the resources to get what they need to be ready and prepared. They weren't being stingy and hoarding and, and like, I don't care about y'all. No, everybody, you know what I'm saying? Got to take responsibility. Everybody got to, you know what I'm saying, do what they're supposed to do to be ready and prepared for the Lord's return. Thank you, Hamlet, for following the live. God bless you. How are you? Okay. They had money. They had the resources they need. They had every opportunity. Instead of slumbering and sleeping, they should have been went and got what they needed, and they should have been ready. They said no. Lest there should not be enough for us and you, but, but go rather to those who sell and buy for yourselves. Okay? Oh, my God. I tell you, it's a lot of folks out there like that. You know what I'm saying? They got what they resource they need, but they want to spend your money. They want you to give them hair. They want you to go lacking when they got what they need. They just ain't doing it, doing what they supposed to be doing. They not, you know what I'm saying? They might be out spending it in pleasure and luxury and, and then all this stuff. They, or they waste it away like the prodigal son. And then there's just nothing. He ain't come tonight. He ain't come today. They just slumbering and sleeping. You know, where's the promise of his coming? You know what I'm saying? Everything continues. They what? Oh, you know, he ain't going to come today. But it say he comes as a thief in the night. And what time was it here? At midnight. We don't know if he's going to come at midnight or cock crowing at morning, at evening. In the, you know what I'm saying? Like we ought to always be ready and prepared looking for his return, listening to the sound of the, the call and the trumpet, the last trump, okay? So when we hear, you know what I'm saying, we know that's what we've been expecting. We've been looking for and hastening to it. And we hear it, we, we hear the call, go out to meet him. We, <laughs> they took their, their lamps and took, took oil and their vessels with their lamps. Ready, the five were wise. They were wise because they had made preparations and they were ready. They were foolish because they did not. They wasted their time. Who knows what righteous living, you know what I'm saying, like that, sleeping and slumbering. They wasn't prepared. They wasn't ready. It goes on to say, it says, um, verse 10, and while they went to buy, see, they got money. The bridegroom came. They go to the, to the marketplace, to those who sell, to buy for themselves. Now, the last minute when the call has been made, you know what I'm saying? At midnight, a cry was heard. Behold, the bridegroom is coming. Go out to meet him. Instead of going out to meet him, they are going to the marketplace of those who sell. They going one way, he's coming another way. They not, they not going out to meet him. They going opposite. They making a last dash at the last minute to try to buy for themselves what they should have already had and been prepared and had and been ready for the bridegroom, okay? And while they went to buy, the bridegroom came. He's here now. And those who were ready went in with him to the wedding. Remember the bride of Christ? Okay, so in fact, you know what I'm saying? Without spot, blemish, wrinkle, any of that. See, holy, undefiled, went in with the wedding, to those with the wedding, and the door was shut. The door to the wedding chamber was, sh was shut. It wasn't just shut, okay? It was locked, okay? And it wasn't just shut, just to be shut, you know what I'm saying? Because look, it says afterward, the other version came. Now they went, they got their oil now, okay? Also saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. But he answered, not one of his servants, but he himself answered on the other side of the door in the wedding chamber and said, Assuredly, I say to you, I do not know you. He totally, you know what I'm saying? He, see, the Lord knows those that are his. Okay, and let everyone that names the name of Christ depart from iniquity. There are a lot of people going around saying, Lord, Lord. Have we not prophesied in your name, cast out devils in your name, did many wonderful works in your name? We are even virgins. Aren't we worthy? Let us in. And he said, he's going to declare unto them, depart from me, you workers of iniquity. I don't know you. Okay. 
He never knew them. They never knew him. They were owning him, but he wasn't owning them. See? Because one has to, you know what I'm saying, be born of his spirit. Be joined to him in spirit. Okay? One body. Okay? And they were not joined to him in spirit, even though they were virgins. Well, at least that's what their testimony is. Okay? Because you'd be surprised people coming up there like, I'm a virgin. you like, God, like, yeah, right. Open the book. Okay? Please. You ain't no virgin. You ain't, per you're not holy. If you don't have, we don't have his spirit. We, you know what I'm saying? We're just like a harlot. We will be just like a harlot. Okay. It doesn't matter whether you slept with somebody or never slept with somebody or whatever like that. Or you've been you're like that. If a person doesn't have his spirit, they are considered like a harlot. And see, he that is joined unto the harlot is one, one body. You know what I'm saying? Like that. We joined in the Lord. We one spirit. So is this a body? Let me make sure I got it right. Going into that harlot. Okay. No, you're not that your bodies are the members of Christ. Shall I then take the members of heart of the Christ and make them the members of a harlot? God forbid. What? No, you're not that he which is joined to the harlot is one body. For two says he shall be one flesh, but he that is joined unto the Lord is one spirit. That's a whole difference than being joined together with somebody and y'all just one body, one flesh, you know what I'm saying, than being joined together in the Lord with the Lord who's one spirit. See? He wants it all. Okay? And he got to start from the heart. From the heart. Okay? Because if he have your heart and have your spirit, okay, then, you know what I'm saying, he's going to give you, a, a, you know what I'm saying, you're going to be a living soul. You know what I'm saying? He's going to preserve your body. And then we have responsibility to present it unto him as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto him, which is our reasonable service. And he said, I'll receive you and I'll be a father unto you. And, I, and you shall be my sons and daughters, says the Lord God Almighty. But then we still have responsibility, having therefore these promises, dearly beloved, let us cleanse ourselves. Okay? Keep all the, uh, the defilements. You know what I'm saying? Cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh and spirit. The flesh, the body, not, you know what I'm saying? You watch the body, but the spirit man. What comes from the eye gate, the ear goat, that's deposited to the heart. Or from my, you know what I'm saying, uh, unsanctified imagination. You know what I'm saying? Like that. That would defile. That we need to go to the Lord and say, Lord, forgive me for thinking that. And, let, you know, Lord, forgive me that if I slipped and, you know, keep me and give me more of your grace and your Holy Spirit, your power. And if I need to flee, you know, give me the wisdom to know when I need to run away from my idolatry, run away from fornication, run away from my idolatry, not practice intentional sin. Okay? To stay in the Spirit, to walk in the Spirit, live in the Spirit, be led in the Spirit. Because there in the promise of God is we will not fulfill the lust of the flesh. It's in the Spirit. Join unto the Lord in one spirit. Amen. Praise Yah. So he goes on to say, he says, watch therefore. Okay. Be watching. Don't be slumbering and sleeping. Be alert. Okay. Watch therefore. For you know neither the day nor the hour in which the Son of Man is coming. Coming like a thief in the night. But those who are prepared, ready, watchful, you know what I'm saying, will be counted as wise, okay, will be, you know what I'm saying, a holy body, a holy assembly, a holy member, okay, ones he, he whom he gonna own, okay, and there's gonna be a wedding, but everybody ain't, that's not gonna be outside, shut out. It tells you, uh, thank you, Holy Spirit, in Revelation, those who are without, we can see those who are on the other side of the door, and their testimony here in the parable, virgins. They might not have had, you know what I'm saying, slept with no man in the flesh, but they wasn't joined to the Lord in the spirit. See? Where's that other? Um, hmm, let me see if I can find that kind of my mind. Mm -hmm. Where is it? Let's see if I can find this word. Well, I could use that too, but that's not the exact what I want. But those are the with the without, without. Where is it at? I thought I had it highlighted. Let me see if I can find it. But let me read this one. Matter of fact, I probably find it here faster. 
Let me see, what is this? Revelation 21. Let me see. Y'all bear with me. Revelation 21. Yeah, I can use this one. It says, uh, Revelation chapter 21, beginning at verse 7, it says, He who overcomes shall inherit all things, and I will be his God, and he shall be my son. But the cowardly, unbelieving, abominable, murderers, sexually immoral, sorcerers, idolaters, and all liars shall have their part in the lake which burns with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. And there's another one. Let me see if I can find it. Oh, there it is. Revelation 22, verse 15. I didn't got it marked. Oh, I did. It's highlighted right there. I, I didn't look down there. There it go right there. Revelation chapter 22, begin at verse 14. It says, blessed are those who do his commandments, that they may have the right to the tree of life and may enter through the gates into the city. Went through the gates. And the door after that is going to be shut, okay? It's, okay, but no, I don't, want to, I don't want to take it too far. Verse 15, it says, but outside, this is outside the gate. Or we might say outside the door, outside the gate. But outside are dogs and sorcerers and sexually immoral and murderers and idolaters and whoever loves and practices a lie. They might have uh, their testimony that they were, you know what I'm saying, virgins and their body having not slept with a man. But who's to say they wasn't practicing all this other stuff like sorcery, witchcraft, you know what I'm saying, like that. Who to say they didn't kill nobody with a murderer or idolater, okay? Who's to say that, you know, they weren't, you know, were fearful and unbelieving and abominable. Okay, sorcerers, idolaters, liars. See, just because one's testimony that, oh, we're virgins. <laughs> Please, they get a lot of what they call pretty, pretty liars, pretty little white liars and stuff like that, <laughs> whatever. Okay, people who seem innocent. You know what I'm saying? I don't want to go into more. I don't want to speak too much in the atmosphere. You think they innocent. But they ain't saved, they ain't converted, you know what I'm saying? They can do the worst, you know what I'm saying? Like unalive somebody. Intentionally. Murder in the heart. Okay? God forbid. So don't let nobody be deceived. Don't be self-deceived thinking because, oh, I don't do what she does and I don't do what he do. And you know what I'm saying? Like that. I ain't that bad and I ain't that, you know what I'm saying? Like that. That ain't my sin. You know what I'm saying? It doesn't matter. You know what I'm saying? We all born in Adam, you know what I'm saying? And we are counted as sinners. But that's why he sent his son, Jesus Christ, to die on the cross for the sins of the whole world, shed his blood. You know what I'm saying? To redeem us back to God. That's the only way we're going to come into right standing with God the Father. Because that's what he requires. Okay? His righteous, holy standards. is holiness. Okay? Holiness without no man shall see the Lord. They won't see his face. They'll hear a voice judging them, but they won't see the face who's doing it. So God forbid. So that's why we say repent. Every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ, turn away from your sin, whatever it might be, however small you think it might be. Don't let that little besetting sin keep you out of heaven. Okay. We cannot, you know what I'm saying? Stand before God in our own self-righteousness. And saying, well, Lord, I did this and I did that and I did that and I'm a virgin. And he's going to say, depart from me, you workers of iniquity. I don't know you. He would not own you. So a lot of people go around owning him. But, you know, the Lord knows those, are, those that are his. And he said that let everyone that names the name of Christ depart from iniquity, like flee away from it, get away from those who are practicing the, these, you know, sins and this lifestyle. 
Get away from them. Run away real fast. You know what I'm saying? Like, don't, don't think you can take it easy and think it's okay. And for you know it, you be seducing, be overcoming, being a slave. You know what I'm saying? Like that. So repent. Change your mind. Okay? Be godly sorrow for your sin. As the Holy Spirit, he produces godly sorrow in your heart. It's not to be repented of nor regretted because the sorrow of the world only leads to death. So he says, repent. Change your mind toward God, toward the Son, Jesus Christ. Okay? His precious blood. Amen. The Holy Spirit, the Holy Living Word, the body of Christ. Amen. The Word of God. Okay? So repent. And be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission, pardon, and release of your sins. And when you do this, God's promise to you is that you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. For the promise of the Holy Spirit is unto you and to your children and to as many as a Far off. It doesn't matter where you're at in the world when you hear the gospel of Jesus Christ and of the kingdom of God and of the grace of God. And to as many as the Lord our God shall call. He's calling you personally unto himself. You only need to respond to him. Okay? In repentance, faith, and obedience. And when you do this, God says to you, I will receive you. And I will be a father unto you, and you shall be my sons and my daughters, says the Lord God Almighty. Amen. Praise God. So then you can pray to God and ask him, amen, to lead you to a faithful follower of the Lord Jesus Christ and his teachings, instructions, his doctrine. Amen. Or where two or three are gathered together in his name, he has promised to be in the midst with them. Or an assembly of God in Christ. Amen. We're not telling you to go join a church or anything like that. Pray and ask God to order your steps to lead and guide you uh, by his spirit, his will. Okay. Through divine providence, he'll order your steps. He'll bring you in contact with the right person or persons at the right place at the right time. And you let them know that you repented of your sins. You accepted Jesus Christ and your Lord as your, you know, your Lord and Savior. That you turn to God and you said, Lord, forgive me. I am a sinner. And I ask you to forgive me my sins and to come in my life, be my Lord, be my Savior, be my God, be my master. Deliver me from the world of flesh and the devil and everything that's contrary to your will. All the vices, whatever it might be, deliver me, save me, even from myself. And he will hear from heaven and he will send the promise of the Holy Spirit, his son, Jesus, the Spirit of Christ. Amen. So you just let them know you repented, you accepted Jesus Christ, your Lord and Savior, and you want to follow and obey him, um, his commands and ordinances under the new covenant of grace. Amen. And you want to, you know what I'm saying, obey his ordinance in baptism to be planted in the likeness of Jesus' death, fully immersed in the water, baptized, raised out of the water in the likeness of his resurrection to therefore walk and live in the newness of life, living in the spirit, walking in the spirit, being led of his Holy Spirit. And when you do this, God's promise to you is that you will not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Amen. Praise God. And pray and ask the Lord, who are you to be subject under his faithful under shepherds called pastors, teachers, overseers, elders, bishops, those who are serving in the office of the evangelist, the office of the prophet, the office of the apostle as messengers of the assemblies, along with the deacons, so that you can see modeled out, amen, a life living in the spirit and be discipled, taught the doctrine of Christ, amen, which he gave to his holy apostles, which is also called the apostles' doctrine, which is sound doctrine, amen. As a newborn babe, you may desire the sincere milk of the living word of God. You may grow up into him, in Christ Jesus the Lord, in all things, who is the head over all things to his body, his called out ones, his ecclesia, his assembly. Amen. Unto strong meat, 
which are the deeper truths and revelations of the living word of God, which belong unto us who are of full age, spiritually mature, who by reason of use have our senses exercised, trained to discern both good and evil, that we may learn to hold fast to that which is good. Never let anyone take it away from you. Amen? And to stand away from that which is evil. Have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather expose them. Abstain from all appearance of evil. And even if you have to, flee from all sin and evil in all of its forms. Amen. Praise God. So pray and ask the Lord to lead you and who are you to be subject under. And ask him if I am to be one of those faithful under shepherds who are to disciple you in the doctrine of Christ, the apostles' doctrine, sound doctrine. If the Lord confirms it in your heart, Lord willing, I would be here to serve you. You're welcome to follow my ministry here on TikTok. I have two profiles which I go live from. I alternate at different times. My name is Tracy Smith. I'm a minister of the gospel of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And my ministry is called Sower of the Word, founded upon the parable of the sower, which Jesus tells in the gospels. Amen. Praise God. And so also you will see my link on my profiles to my YouTube channel. You click that and it'll take you straight to my YouTube channel. And I have a lot of ministry videos over there where you can grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. All I ask is when you go to my YouTube channel, subscribe to my YouTube channel. You can turn on the notification bell there because sometimes I go uh, live streaming there. Or when I upload a new video that I've done here on TikTok. Amen. Or short. Amen. All I ask is when you watch them, as you're edified, you will be challenged, but you will grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ as a spiritual maturity. When you watch them, hit the like button on it, the thumbs up. You're welcome to leave a comment or leave your prayer request. Amen. And then share them with others. And I pray the Lord will bless your faithfulness, your obedience, your good works. Pray for me that I may fulfill my ministry, my responsibilities to my family and household. Amen. And to whomever the Lord has called me to serve. And for healing in my body, I would appreciate it very much. Amen. Praise God. Amen. So we never want to close the broadcast without pronouncing a blessing over your lives and this broadcast for future viewers. Amen. So at this time, we ask you all to lift up. Hold up. Let me open up my Bible. I like to have it open when I'm about to do this. Amen. Praise God. Lift up holy hands without wrath and without doubting. Open up your hearts to receive the blessing. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Now may the God of peace who brought up our Lord Jesus from the dead, that great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of the everlasting covenant, make you complete in every good work to do his will, working in you, what is well-pleasing in his sight through Jesus Christ, to whom be glory forever and ever. 
grace be with you all. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Praise God. God bless you. I love you. Thank you all for being here. Thank you for the likes and shares and your grace gifts. May the Lord bless you 100 fold. Amen. You all continue to have a super blessed night, day, and evening in the Lord Jesus Christ with your family, Christian friends, and all the saints of God with you. And Lord willing, I will see you all soon. Amen. Praise Yah.